So here's the thing. This trailer isn't supposed to exist. Hey everybody, Josh here at Advantage One, and what I mean by that is this is a Grey Wolf SE. This is the more simpler series of Grey Wolf, but there's also the full Grey Wolf, and then there's a fancy fiberglass skin package you can slap on top of that called Black Label Edition. The thing is, the SE series Grey Wolfs are not supposed to be able to be built in the fiberglass skin Black Label Edition. Now, I would really love to see them adopt that in the new RV market, but currently, in the time this was built, that wasn't supposed to be the case. So this is a special kind of almost custom build. Um, it came from a, a pretty good sized dealership chain, so it's very possible they were able to work out like a special purchase kind of bundle with Cherokee when they made these uh, Black Label SE Series Grey Wolves. It gives us the, uh, the sm notice though, it's just the fiberglass skin. It's not actually a full Black Label package. Uh, it's one of the things, if you're familiar with Cherokee and Grey Wolf RVs, that might seem a little confusing to you. Now, if you're not, what we're actually looking at here is just an extremely well-kept, potentially half-ton towable, if you have a truck with the right capabilities, um, family bunkhouse camper. And what I like about this is this is like the Generation 2 of this floor plan. When this first came out, it had no privacy wall at the end of the bedroom. It was just one open room, and it was... It was weird, and that's coming from me. If I'm saying something's weird, you know that says something. This is one that has a privacy wall for the bedroom. This is a really good little family camper. If you've never had a trailer, or if you're trying to upgrade something with a slide, you're really gonna like what you see here, and you are not inheriting someone else's problems. And the more I got to looking at this, the more I think it actually was used with uh, a, a fair amount of regularity. I just don't think it was really beat up or used up, you know what I mean? Um, the camper is six and a half foot tall inside. Uh, we do have a little bit of a step up slide here, but you notice you still have a uh, like a full on super slide with the uh, the the sleeper sofa that can fold down, the dinette can fold down. You've got the drawers below the dinette there for some nice big wide open storage. But this is what I was talking about up here with this being a Generation Two series. When this floor plan first came out, that whole privacy wall wasn't there. It was just a wide open bedroom, and it was weird. It's like you're you're doing dishes at the sink, and then you would lay down and go to bed. <laughs> it was just odd. And uh, this one doesn't really have that. Um, now, a lot of floor plans have some kind of sink that angles out or something like that. This one doesn't, but I don't think it really suffers for it as a result. If you feel like adding a TV, you've got a great setup for the entertainment center right there straight across from the sofa. We'll come back and open all this stuff up in just a minute. Um, this is the view from the sofa, by the way. Right above us, we have the air conditioner, but it is centralized. This is going to be a good spring, summer, fall camper. It's not made for Arctic winter camping or anything like that. But that being said, if you are going to leave the RV winterized, it would probably keep its cabin temperature just fine. The, the majority of when people ask, is it four seasons? Really, the big question there is, can you run the water system when it's freezing outside? This one just isn't quite made for that. This is made for someone like me who camps casual. Now, first of all, this little stand right below the TV hookups, that's not from the factory. That was something added by the previous owners, which I actually like because I always thought the factory version of that wall was a little too blank and barren. But what's not obvious until we open that door and get in here is how that wraps all the uh, the way around there. Pardon me just a second. I'm going to see if I can get you some light shed inside. Hey, there we go. Yeah, uh, it's like when you, when you have a bright idea, you know, the light bulb comes on. <laughs> so all of the shelving on the left is uh, from the factory. Kind of like the shelving below the entertainment center. That right there was added by the previous owners. That was not factory shelving. But until I pointed that out, I bet most people didn't Notice the difference. They did a really nice job uh, upfitting it. Um, oops, sorry. I want to back up and I want to go slow, not to throw the camera on, make you motion sick. I did notice one little thing. There is a little discolored spot right about there, right now, and I tapped all around it. Everything is solid as a rock. I don't think that's actually from like exterior leaks or water damage. I think that they probably had something in this closet, like a. I don't know, a bottle of water, something that sweat and condensated or something like that. And it maybe soaked into the carpet a little bit, which wicked into the wall just a touch right there. But that's, there's no problems there. It's just a little unsightly. But 
uh, again, most of the time you're going to have stuff in the way. You're going to have the door closed. I think that that's when, when we look at it on camera, when we talk about, like, oh no, but when you actually go out and go camping, I don't think that that's really going to affect you too awful greatly, but that is my opinion and you are potentially spending your money. So I want you to form your own opinions. I just want to give you the information where you can be properly you know, informed to make those decisions. Um, I, I like that dedicated chunk of counter space to the left of that big stainless farm sink because it gives you a spot for like a dish uh, strainer. Uh, you know what I mean? Not a lot of campers do that. Or a little coffee maker corner with that outlet, something like that. And like all of your Cherokees and Gray Wolves, your dinette here, you have those big, uh, you know, full extension drawers so you don't have to tear the entire dinette apart to get to that storage. And something else I noticed just now putting everything away, it's minor, but I did notice where they had used the sink cover as a cutting board, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's a perfectly acceptable use for this surface right here, but it is a little bit um, unsightly for the second owners, and I'm trying to really you know, scan you all over that so you can see what it looks like. It is all very light level surface abrasions. It's not like they uh, were watching the new Halloween movie and pretended to be Michael Myers and tried to stab and murder to death the sink cover or anything like that. It's, it's, it's pretty minor. But again, you deserve to know about it. It, you know, it's not my decision whether I, you know, think it's important enough to cover or not. I like to cover everything and I let you make your own decisions. Now the bedroom's simple. It's straightforward. It's a camp queen, but it's private. It's got, you know, your dual hanging closets. It's got storage above. It's, it doesn't have to be fancy over the top just to be really darn effective. And this is definitely really darn effective. And coming out of the bedroom here is maybe a little bit better view of uh, how the living room sort of lays out and plays out. Again, if you feel like adding some entertainment, you got the perfect spot there. Actually, now that I say that, let me slide backwards into the bedroom a little bit. Because one of the things that uh, there uh, is on the wall over here is a matching TV mount like you have in the living room or outside. So you could theoretically outfit this camper with up to three screens if you want. You could also leave it with none, which is probably what I'd do. Not that there's anything wrong with watching TV when you camp. I just don't tend to do a lot of it. I do enough of that at home. I'm going camping to connect with my family, but to each their own. I don't judge other people for how they camp. You could also outfit this with up to three televisions and have like bedroom, outside, and living room, like three zone entertainment going on if you are so inclined. It's just kind of a question of whatever works for you. But one of the nice surprises on this one is the uh, the giant like XL fan up here in the bathroom vent. Um, when you're in this size and price point and like category of campers, that is not always something you find. But it is something that the the Cherokee Gray Wolf group has always done very well. Like a uh, a, a big corner medicine cabinet, an angle mounted sink. So like if you're shaving your face or something like that, you know you you've actually you can stand in the bathroom and not have to hang your butt halfway outside. Good leg room around this, good hip and shoulder room as well, since there's nothing blocking that out. And that is the Cherokee Shub, as I like to call it. Kind of a tub, kind of a shower. It's not so deep that it's hard to step into, but it's deep enough that it'll keep that curtain from flipping out and leaving a bunch of uh, water all over the floor, you know? Now, at the start of our video, we talked all about the fiberglass skin that is uh, on this camper and how, in theory, it's not supposed to be here, but that doesn't matter in theory because in actual real world practice, we've got that high gloss, gorgeous black label fiberglass skin here. Now, <clears throat> again, it's not a full black label package. It is the, uh, the good looking skin, which is going to clean so much easier versus the corrugated siding because think of all the little cracks and crannies and crevices and everything else that are in there. Crack sounds like damage. You know what I mean? There's, there's grooves, if you will, like cheese it grooves, which are... Oh my lord, those are those are delicious. I don't know what they put in them, but I think I, I tasted cheese, salt, and angel's tears. They are delicious. It's insane. You see, the slide awning was also added to this. Not something you normally find on any gray wolf. Plus, you got the power tongue jack up front, which um, at the time this was made, normally wouldn't have been on a gray wolf SE. Uh, actually, I think even on the current Grey Wolf SEs, it'd still be a manual tongue jack. So, a couple one, two, three nice things right there. Simple side mount solar prep plug off the side here. The nose, by the way, <coughs> pardon me, is not fiberglass. The nose is actually an extra thick aluminum. 
so that basically the whole nose is effectively like diamond plate. It's like super resistant to wind buffeting. You got yourself a propane cooker hooker right over here, uh, right up front so that you can do some, uh, you know, campsite grilling and really make everybody walking by jealous because your food smells so good. What is it about grilling food? It smells so good. Like the only disappointment I had on this is just that this wasn't cleaned out before it was brought in, but that's just, that's a vacuum cleaner kind of quick thing. That's not a big deal there. Um, those little uh, rodent repellent packets, by the way, those things are the business. They get the job done. I don't know what's in them exactly. I don't know what the magic mixture inside those pouches are. I just know that whenever I see those things in campers, I don't see signs of mice in campers. So whether it's purely coincidental or they are actually effective, there is a high correlation between those things and a complete lack of mouse houses or... Uh, what, what would be, yeah, I guess it'd just be mouse, like, mice houses? That doesn't sound right, does it? And, and it's certainly not, you know, mice houses. <laughs> Cargo rack on the back here, rated for about 200 pounds. That is going to be before the spare tire is applied to that. But the spare tire actually would have been an optional item on this. So it is nice that... Uh, you know, there's some serious smart upgrades that went along with this here. Now, something else that's a very rare find um, at this kind of size and class and whatnot is both an outside shower and a black tank flush. Now, more brands are starting to get better on that, but again, this is a little older, not terribly old. It is still late model. Actually, that reminds me of something. I had my ear to the ground on this one, uh, and it turns out it is late model enough that pending finance approval, you could still get same as new financing on this one potentially. That's that's pretty cool. Hmm? Yes? Like this trailer you will. Call us you should. Go camping you must. You guys hear that? That's the sound of a good deal. <laughs> That's so stupid, sorry. I didn't know I was going with this bit. I don't know that it ever really went anywhere, but it was fun. So thank you for tuning in. Take care, stay safe, have fun. In camp happy, everyone. Hmm? Hmm?